So let's take a look at the mechanism of radical chlorination of propane. First, of course, we have to furnish the chlorine radical. And this is going to require energy, usually in the form of UV light. That's the initiation step. And then the first propagation step is going to be hydrogen abstraction by the chlorine radical. So let me draw propane real quick. All right. And now we have we have the issue of we're confronted with the issue of which hydrogen atom is abstracted. Are you going to abstract the hydrogen from this carbon here, this carbon here, or this carbon here. Let me label this C1. Label this C2. I'm going to label this C3. And hopefully you see that abstracting from C1 and abstracting from C3 are equivalent processes. So we'll just look at abstraction from C1 and C2. So let's say, let's say uh, we were abstracting a proton from C1. So we'd have homolytic cleavage here and an unpaired electron be left off. We get HCl plus this primary chlori pri primary uh, propyl radical now let's say we had abstraction at the at C2 at this carbon so draw this again if we had abstraction at this carbon here's what would happen so we'd have homolytic cleavage. And you'd get a you'd get a secondary propyl radical. And experimental observations tell us that the hydrogen abstracted from the secondary carbon is four times as likely to be abstracted than the hydrogen abstracted from C1. So the hydrogen abstracted from C2 is four times as likely to be abstracted as the hydrogen abstracted from C1. And to gain some insight into why, you have to look at the 3D structure of each radical. So the 3D structure of this radical and this radical. So I've drawn the 3D structures of the propyl radicals, both the one propyl radical. This is the one propyl radical. And the two propyl radical. Now these aren't full molecular, or these aren't full molecular orbital structures because, uh, I've just shown the p orbitals bearing the unpaired electron here. But uh what you what you should bear in mind is that these two carbon atoms here, so this one and this one, these are sp3 hybridized. But the one the carbon atom bearing the unpaired electron is sp2 hybridized. So this carbon-hydrogen bond, this carbon-hydrogen bond, this carbon-carbon bond are all planar. And the p orbital goes above and below the plane, these, these three bonds. So here you have an sp2 hybridized carbon. These are each 1s one, one hydrogen orbitals. So you have sp2, 1s bonds here, and sp2, sp3 here. SP3, SP3 here. And in this case, these outer two, 
Carbons are sp3 hybridized. Whereas this one, bearing the unpaired electron, is sp2 hybridized. So, what is, why is, why is this one, um, what, why is this one formed more frequently than, than this one? Or why, why is, uh, why is, why is this hydrogen at, at this carbon at, abstracted before one at this hydrogen, or, or at this carbon is? And it has to do with the stability, the relative stability of the secondary the secondary two propyl radical and the primary one propyl radical. This one is more stable because of a phenomenon called hyperconjugation. So let, let's look at the one propyl radical for a moment. So this this uh, unpaired electron sitting in the unhybridized p orbital would like to delocalize as much as it possibly can. So let's look along along this bond axis here, and let's remember there's there's free rotation around this carbon. So we'll have we'll have that unhybridized p orbital and uh, I'm going to ignore these hydrogens here for a moment and you'll have there there's free rotation around around this bond so this is this is the other methyl group I'm going to call it ME a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, a methyl here. Remember, there's free rotation around this bond, so this can get to the configuration. This guy can rotate, so you know it can it it can get to the configuration where 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 this this um. SP3 1s bond between the carbon and hydrogen is oriented is 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 aligned with this unhybridized uh, p orbital here, and what that'll what that'll allow is this electron sitting in this unhybridized p orbital to delocalize in, into this SP3 1s molecular orbital here and uh, in this in this uh, one propyl radical there's only there's only one carbon atom bearing that one carbon atom located one carbon away like this this carbon like on the if in this methyl group you know I could uh, I could draw the hydrogens in here and there's free there there's free rotation around around this bond as well so there will be an orientation where this this uh, sp3 1s bond is aligned with this unhybridized p orbital but the, the issue really is that this carbon is is too far away to allow for effective delocalization of this unhybridized p this electron sitting in this unhybridized p orbital. However, when you're looking at the two propyl radical, you have two carbon atoms that are located that that are just one carbon away that are that are adjacent to this carbon bearing this um, unpaired electron sitting in the unhybridized p orbital, and and of course there's free rotation around both of these bonds here so these these methyl hydrogens can align such that you'll have the the sp3-1s overlap the sp3-1s molecular orbital here will be able to uh, bear some of this this charge sitting in this unhybridized p orbital
and it'll be delocalized across across two two bonds whereas here you will only have delocalization with with only this bond here with a secondary with a secondary um radical you have you have more opportunity for that unpaired electron to delocalize now let's say let's say you had a tertiary radical say we're looking at a tertiary radical so then uh so I'm drawing a tertiary radical here it's kind of a crude drawing but I've shown the the uh unhybridized p orbital bearing the unpaired electron and you can see here that there are there are three carbon hydrogen bonds with which this uh electron can be delocalized here there's free rotation around each of these carbon carbon bonds they're single bonds so there the energy barrier to rotation is very very low so you will have an orientation where where you'll be able to have delocalization of this electron with all with carbon hydrogen bonds on all three of these carbon atoms and this basically makes the tertiary radical the most stable the secondary radical the second most stable and the primary radical the least stable of course when you have the methyl radical which is just uh just be ch3 and this carbon bearing an unpaired electron there is no adjacent carbon atom to bear some of this uh charge here so it, it would actually it would actually look like it would actually look like something like this and you can see there's no unpaired electron here so this carbon's sp2 hybridized and this is an unhybridized p orbital there is no adjacent carbon atom over which this charge can delocalize there's no adjacent carbon atom bearing a another ch bond over which this unpaired electron can delocalize so this is the least stable so I'll just go ahead and write it here uh, radical relative radical stability Say tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary greater than methyl and so the uh, the secondary product the secondary so this this was just the the steps we showed here like this is just formation of the primary radical and this is formation of the secondary radical after this point you'd actually you'd have a reaction with uh, diatomic chlorine and of course you get homolytic cleavage here and this would this would basically combine to give you your one chloropropane and this here would uh combine to give you two chloropropane so uh this would uh come that way and you get get two chloropropane and, and of course CL radical 
I forgot to write CL radical here. You get CL radical here. But this will this is observed more often than this is and uh when you take into account the fact that there there are six primary hydrogens and only two secondary hydrogens each of these hydrogens is four times each of the hydrogens in uh propane secondary hydrogens is four times more like likely to be abstracted than one of the primary hydrogens the reason is that in the uh the rate limiting step involves formation of the radical and the secondary radical is more stable than the primary. The secondary radical formed here is more stable than the primary radical formed here. And the relative rad radical stabilities will hopefully make more sense when we look at more examples.